Hello, the purpose of this video is to explain some of the, uh, some of how timing works in logic world, showing some timing circuits. Logic world is based around a, uh, a series of simulation ticks. On each simulation tick, logic world will advance the state of the simulation. Most components have a one tick cost uh, so it takes one tick to process what that component is going to do. There's a there's components that don't. For example, this fast buffer here is called a fast buffer because it has a zero cost to it. The fastest timer I believe you can build is you take an inverter, you take the output of the inverter, and you feed it back into the input of the inverter. So what happens is the output changes state, it goes to this inverter pin, and because of the one tick delay, it's gonna take one tick for it to change state. So this goes to uh, true, and that goes to false in the next step. So true, false, feedback to true over and over. And because of that, this little uh, one tick clock, if you want to call it that, is changing state every simulation tick. It's either going to on or off. So that's the fastest clock you can build. It, just to show the uh, propagation again, so this comes through the output here. When it turns, when it uh, sets this uh, to high, then one tick later that goes to low because remember it's inverting. So while it looks like it's synchronous, it's just an illusion because when this pin goes on, then in the next tick, it'll go off. So on, off, okay. So hopefully that's clear. Uh, the next circuit here is some people call it a one tick uh, clock or whatever, but it's really, uh, you know, it's, it's two <laughs> because this inverter is one and this buffer is one. This is the buffer or slow buffer if you wanna contrast it with the fast buffer. And this works just like this, except that there's an additional uh, step because we're feeding back through a buffer. The buffer works exactly like a one tick delayer would, except that we don't have one tick delayers anymore after the last update. So this uh, clock is changing state every two ticks. Now, if I put a delayer in, which I can't set faster than two ticks, this is now a three tick uh, clock. In other words, it changes state every three tick ticks. It either goes off or it goes on and it stays off and on for three ticks. Now, sometimes you just want uh, rather than being a sort of, it's on for, you know, three ticks and it's off for three ticks, you just want a pulse. So by using this circuit here, I'll call it a one tick, uh, you know, I'll call it a, uh, pulse circuit or a one tick pulse circuit by connecting up an inverter and an AND gate the output of the inverter goes into the input of the AND gate, and then my input goes to one of the AND gate terminals and the input of the inverter. Now, if I come look at this thing, you'll see this clock go on here. It takes a moment to propagate, then it goes on for exactly one pulse. And if you watch this clock here, it's on, that's on, that clock's still on, now that clock's off. Maybe it's more obvious if I increase this time to like, let's do it five. So that clock is now on for a while. That goes off. The clock is staying on, but we've already sent that pulse. And that pulse is only sent when this sends a, a an on or you know high state. And that's why I built this circuit here. This is what I use for my CPU. This switch is just to switch it on and off. 
So what this does is it takes the output of a clock and then it feeds it into a buffer and an inverter and that's just to keep the time, the buffers to keep the timing consistent so that, um, you know, these basically uh, take the same amount of time. And then they go into two one tick inverters. So now when this goes on, it sends a pulse and it would when it goes off, it also sends a pulse. So let's we'll see if we can see this here. There's the output. You could watch the clock change state here on this output of the clock. So when that changes from zero to one, after the delay, you'll see a pulse. Okay, so that pulse is done. Then when this clock goes off, that goes from on to off, this will send another pulse. So in that fashion, you can get a pulse on any uh, on a changing state and not just on when it goes from uh, zero to one. And the last one I wanna show here, I, and I was building a multiplication circuit and I needed a delay because I needed a uh, an output going to update my instruction counter and then a certain amount of ticks later I wanted to tell it to decode the instruction. So I needed a certain amount of time for the instruction counter to uh, stabilize because it, it, it's a ripple adder. So it takes a you know some number of pulses to propagate all the ripples through the system uh, you know, when you have maximum amounts of carries going on. So all I do is I take my clock output here. This relay is just to turn it off and on. So from the output of the relay, I go through a pin directly. That's my uh, first timing signal to the uh, instruction counter clock to advance the clock. And then five ticks later, I send a second signal and that's to tell my decoder it can now decode the instruction. So hopefully that was of some help in understanding some of the uh, the ways timing works and clocks and one tick pulses work in Logic World. Thank you for watching.